I'm Marcy Lundy. Today is Tuesday, May 21st, 2024. And this is a special uh, dual episode for both Cult of Kindness podcast, as well as Beauty's Aging Gracefully. Please welcome my guest, Andrea Donsky. Hello, Andrea. Hello, Marcy. Happy to be here. Great. Happy to have you on. So Andrea is an award-winning nutritionist, uh, menopause educator and researcher, and co-founder of Morphus. Andrea, if you could tell us about yourself and your story, how'd you get to where you are today? Sure. Uh, so I have been in the health and wellness space for almost 25 years, and it started back when I was in my 20s and I was having stomach aches and I wasn't sure what was wrong with me and I was bloated and I just, I was so uncomfortable and it led me down a path to really understand what was happening to my, to my body. And I remember one day I looked at my husband, I was, I think we were engaged at the time. I was probably 28 and I looked at my husband and I'm like, I can't, this is like, I just can't function. Like I just was so unhappy. And I said, I think I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to do something about it. And I'm going to go back to school. So I went back to school to become a nutritionist and fast forward many years later, when I was 47, I started having really mm -hmm. bad hot flashes and to the point though, where I couldn't function like Marcy, it was so bad. And I'm sure it's like so many of your listeners have been through the same thing. We know that, you know, hot flashes are a very common symptom and we'll, we'll talk about some of those more common symptoms as we talk more. And I got my first hot flash and I remember I was at work and I remember thinking to myself, Oh my gosh, am I in menopause? Like I'm, pro I'm in menopause. I'm getting hot flashes. This is where I'm, this is what I must be in. Right. I didn't even know the word perimenopause existed. Right. I had no idea about anything about yeah. this phase of life, even though I had been in the industry <laughs> for 17 years at the time. And I'm like, Oh, I know everything about my body. That's my job. I knew nothing right. about perimenopause or menopause. <laughs> and then that led me down to another rabbit hole where I was like, okay, I need to figure out how to help myself because I cannot go on like this because it's that bad. Like every 30 seconds, I was having hot flashes. They last, sorry, every minute they were lasting 30 seconds. I'm like, this is not living. And if I don't right. figure out a way how to do this, like I got, I got to figure something out. I have three kids. Like, I, you know, it was like, I, I couldn't not do anything about it. <laughs> So I, yeah. that led me down the rabbit hole again, kind of. And, and the reason I told the first story is because it's a very similar story where I was like, okay, I wasn't feeling good. I'm going to go down this rabbit hole of research to try to figure out how to help myself, which I did. And then I'm like, well, I'm going to help myself. And I'm also going to help millions of other women. And that's what led me to start Morphus and to what I'm doing today. Wonderful. Yes. Uh, I haven't got to the hot flashes, but I'm in the zone and and like you was like, what is this? Oh, it's perimenopause. <laughs> right. And you're like, what is perimenopause? Like, did you know what yeah. it was? Did you know what perimenopause was? No, no idea. No yeah, idea at all. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, right? Marcy, like, think about it, right? Two grown women right. were like, we're in this phase of life where we're hit by it, like, like out of nowhere, right? It's like, wait a second, right. I'm having all these symptoms but we have no idea what it is. That just shows us how much work we have to do from an educational standpoint, from an awareness standpoint, and not just mm -hmm. starting for women over 40, starting for when, from when we're younger, right? So, and, and opening exactly. up that conversation. Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, you know, we're all aware that menopause happens one day, but menopause is almost secondary to what we're going to go through prior to that. <laughs> And I, I mean, I was asking my, my mom, you know, like she didn't have the same experience. And it's like, I was just frantically looking for research. So thank goodness for people like you, uh, you're greatly appreciated because I think so many women who are Gen Xers are finding themselves in this spot, but aren't even thinking that, oh, okay, well, this is a period we're going to be going through. So I think the conversation, some women might not be comfortable because they didn't even realize they were going to be going through this. So the conversation is very necessary. Uh, if you could tell our audience about the symptoms, because they may just think, oh, I'm just going through something, but not this. Sure. 
So many years ago, I was I was just starting to get into doing the research. I, I didn't really have a company in perimenopause that targeted perimenopause and menopause, but I was starting to think about what was happening. So I was at a party with my husband and I met a right. friend and she was telling me how she was creating an app for women in perimenopause and menopause. And I remember thinking at the time and I asked her, I'm like, an app? Are there that many symptoms that you actually have like enough to put on an app for women? And she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, There's, like 35 to 40 symptoms. And I was like, wow, that's wow. a lot of symptoms. And the way my brain works, Marcy, is I went home that night and I was like, OK, I'm going to start tracking these 35 to 40 symptoms because I wonder how many I have. Sure. So I started looking at the research right. and I started doing a lot of N of one research. I, I refer to N of one, meaning my own research as to what's happening with my body. I started asking friends. I started asking my mom what she went through. And I started just doing my own research about it. And then soon enough, I was at 85 symptoms. And I'm like, wait, 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 there's way more than 35 to 40. We found there were 85. And then I was like, you know what, if there are 85, there are probably more. So what I decided to do is I wanted to do some citizens research. So this is research that we get from our community. So we have now, we have 10 okay. surveys on our website, which is amazing. So I would love your listeners to go to our website and to fill them out. It's under the research tab at the top and because your voice matters. Like I'm okay. always like, this is citizens research. This is our community's research. We need to hear from you. And so we okay. created a site. My first, my first survey ever was a signs and symptoms survey. We now have almost 5,000 responses, which is incredible. Wow. And we we now know that there are over 103 symptoms from our research. So way more than the 35 to 40, way more than the 85, uh, over 100. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And for me, it sort of started doing 2020 and 2021. So I'm just thinking, oh, you know, it's just I'm affected by the pandemic, <laughs> you know, which I was. But this was something else going on. So it's amazing to learn that there are that many symptoms. Uh, if we could talk about women and sleeping, I know that just life causes us to have issue with that, but how is it affecting ladies in perimenopause? Sure. So we know that, so if we look at the top 10 symptoms, a couple of things I wanna note, and then I'll weave it into sleep. So we know that sleep okay. is the number three most common symptom of perimenopause and menopause. The number one is fatigue and anxiety. Number two is brain fog. Number three is sleep. And then we have uh, then we have memory loss, anxiety, joint pain, lack of concentration, lack of focus, hot flashes, and libido. So that's kind of the top 10 list. And what's interesting about that is that we always think we equate menopause with hot flashes, which is what I did. But in reality, it's like right. way down on the list of the top 10. So that's the first thing I want to mention. The second thing is out of that top 10, we now know from the research that we did is that 50% of our symptoms are actually cognitive slash mental health related, which was another thing that su really surprised me because I was like, oh yeah, hot flashes and sleep, you know, we're not sleeping and night sweats and all these things. They're all physical symptoms, which now we know that isn't necessarily right. always the case, right? So a lot of it is, is cognitive or mental health related. But that's an important thing to do because women, if you go back to, you know, many, many years ago, they used to equate hysteria, right? That's where the word hysterectomy came from, is that women were hysterical, right? So it makes sense that they represent a large portion, but I didn't realize it was 50% of the symptoms in the top 10. So that was another thing. So when it came to sleep, yeah. I was like, I'm very fascinated with sleep. So I, I, I kind of joke around and I'm like, I call myself a menopause sleep hacker and I wear a special technology for sleep and I have a couple of wearables and I'm very intrigued by sleep because we now know, well, we know that sleep is super important, but when it comes to perimenopause right. and menopause, we know that sleep and their gut health are like the foundations of foundations of so many things. So we really need to focus on both of those when we're looking at helping ourselves in this phase of life. So I wanted to dig a little bit okay. deeper and understand why aren't we sleeping? Like we know that sleep is a major issue for so many people. We know that for women in particular, more so than men, sleep is a problem, right? So it, 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 it's, it's sure. across the board for all ages. But as we go into perimenopause yes. and menopause and as we're aging, sleep becomes a bigger, is bigger issue and especially for women. So what we found was so we created a sleep survey and we have over 3000 responses for that, which is again, amazing. And we now yes. know, 
sorry, you know, we have a bit of a delay, so I apologize to everyone who's listening. So I oh. just want you to think I'm cutting you <laughs> off. I'm not. It's just there's, there's a, a little bit of a delay. I apologize. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I think you were going to say right. something. Oh, no, no, no. You're fine. I wasn't. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah. So what we found was, is that the, the top three reasons women aren't sleeping is number one, due to stress and anxiety. Number two is due to bathroom visits. So if you're waking up to go pee every hour, if you're, if it's more than once a night, then it's too many, right? So they're waking up to pee. And then the third reason is night sweats. And then some other reasons that we're waking up is due to pain in our body. Like if we're in pain, we are not sleeping well. That's going to affect a lot of different areas of our sleep. If, you know, if our mattress and pillows aren't comfortable, you're not going to sleep well. If your room is too hot or if your room is too noisy, like, so there are a lot of different things. So women being woken up, I still have a 13 year old, year old at home. Sometimes she wakes me up in the middle of the night, right? So there's other reasons why we're not sleeping, sleep apnea, snoring, so, but those are the top three and then everything else under there, many different reasons as to why um, we're not sleeping as well in this phase of life. Mm, okay, thank you so much. Um, in regards to mood and anxiety, uh, what happens to our moods as we go into this phase of life? So mood issues are definitely on the list. They're in the top 20 most common issues. And we all know, I, when I was going through perimenopause and Marcy, I'd love to hear your story too, is my mood was all mm -hmm. over the place. Like I used to joke around with my family. I'd be like, okay, so I wake up in a good mood, but you know, five minutes later, my mood is erratic. So I go from happy to sad, to angry, to, you know, to whatever, all the different emotions were coming up all within like a few minutes, right? Like we've all felt that. And women have expressed them rage, feeling so much rage and anger. And, you know, so all of these moods and crying at like, they're watching a comedy and all of a sudden they're crying, right? So, or their fear is taking, <laughs> taking hold, right? Like, it's like we go, it's like, yeah, it's definitely an interesting time. But when it comes to anxiety in particular, we know as we go into perimenopause and menopause, first of all, we're more anxious. So our research, we have another uh, survey that we talk just about mood and anxiety. And we know that 66% of women have said that they are more stressed now and more anxious now than they were before. And the thing is, is that they're more anxious now and we're less able to cope with it than we were before because of all the changes are going on. So that formula makes for it really difficult for us to deal with the increased stress in our life at this time. Oh, certainly. Yes. <clears throat> Mine, it's so funny. You know, I didn't realize anything was going on, but uh, my poor husband, you know, he was, you know, the person that, dealing with all of this where I thought I was still being myself and it was like, oh, something's going on, but I don't know what is. And so uh, between that and like you were saying, you're crying at a comedy, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and so it's just like, okay, I'm not sure what's happening. But then I started seeing people like Drew Barrymore uh, talking about it as well as Gwyneth Paltrow. And when they were talking about the ages, then it really caused me to think, oh, okay, let me, let me do a bit of a checklist. And sure enough, you know, yeah, it makes sense. And for myself, I was someone who, you know, my cycle still existed. And that was another misconception because I was under, you know, the belief that, oh, once my period is gone, then that's when I'm there. And it's just not true. <laughs> And so, you know, like I said, thank goodness for you. And so we can actually learn and realize what is happening. Yeah. And that's so great that you just said that because there are so many myths that surround yeah. this phase of life, like the being too young. I've had many women who were in their 40s and even in their 50s who have been told that they're too young to be in perimenopause or menopause. And that is not true. I mean, we could start perimenopause as early as 35. I started it at 36. I had phantom smells. And that was my one of my main symptoms that I remember. And I was, sell, I was smelling smoke. And I would ask women in my office, are you smelling smoke? And they're like, no. And I'm like, whoa. And I went for two MRIs. I went for tests. Nobody can figure it. I went to an ENT. Nobody can figure out what was wrong with me. And then now wow. I only figured it out recently in the last couple of years that I was like, wait, I was in perimenopause. But, no, you yeah. know, everyone, you know, the, the, the specialist that I went to would be like, no, it's in your head. It's not, you know, there's nothing going on. Like, so we can't figure it out. 
So it's an interesting mm. thing that I feel that one of the bigger projects that I'm working on right now is to really help to educate healthcare providers into understanding. We just published a white paper. It's like going to be on our on our website very shortly, a white paper on the phantom smells, because if we could just mm -hmm. educate the healthcare providers and the doctors and be like, listen, if a woman's coming into your office and they're presenting with phantom smells and you sent them from an MRI, you know that it's come back clear. There are no other reasons for it if, unless they have allergies or sinuses or like there can be other reasons, right? So it's not always yeah. like, oh, it's yeah. just menopause, right? So there can be definitely, so you always want to go to your doctor and get things ruled out. Always, always, always. But what we can do is prevent the incessant number of testing, right? Because you're trying to get that answer. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you're like, well, wait, I've had several tests. Everything came back negative. I don't need to go for another MRI or two to see again, to figure it out. So it's just important right. from a healthcare standpoint, but also from an education standpoint, because health anxiety is a big symptom in this phase of life where women start to worry about what's going on. So we could minimize that health anxiety saying, okay, now I understand I'm not going crazy or, oh, okay, I'm smelling smoke. I know it's a phantom smell. Okay, I got that. I don't have to stress about it anymore, right? And that's all of those reasons are so important as to why we're doing this work and trying to educate women. Wonderful, that's right. Uh, the reason I'm doing a crossover episode is because this month is Women's Health Month, as well as Mental Health Awareness Month. And another thing that uh, I did not touch on was the anxiety factor. I have a pretty busy life and nothing changed. The life was still the same, you know, flow, but I could no longer deal, you know, and nothing had changed. I just couldn't function. And so it's amazing to learn anxiety as part of that. Oh, yeah. Anxiety could come on for a lot of women or it can be exacerbated. And for me, mm. it was exacerbated, unfortunately, because I had had anxiety for many years of my life and it became exacerbated. But the key is this. So, you know, we're talking about all these different symptoms and there are, there's so many and, you know, it's overwhelming. And when we're in the weeds, and I always say, I kind of use this analogy that when we're in the weeds, when we can't see out of those weeds, right? Like we're, you know, we're, we're trudging along and we're trying to like deal with one symptom and then the other, and we can't function. We can't get out of bed. We can't focus. We can't concentrate. Like there are so many things that are coming into play. Once we're out of that and we figure out what we can do to take control of our symptoms and our health. And that's what a big part of what I do is how do we look at it from nutrition, lifestyle supplements. And then there's also the hormone part of it, which is out of my lane, but that's an option too for women, right? So there are many things yeah. that we can do today that we didn't have those options many years ago. Like when my mom was going through menopause, she suffered with hot flashes for 20 years, even post-menopause, right? So, oh. you know, it's, it's, we now know there's things that you could do, but I do want to acknowledge the women who are currently going through it and being like, Andrea, I can't even think past like, you know, good things coming to me in the future when I can't even get out of bed this morning. So it is, you know, it is very important for you to know that it does get better for so many of us, it gets better. And there are beautiful things once you're in menopause, like I've been in menopause now for four years. I love it. Like, <laughs> I, I feel like I'm a completely different person now than I was in my forties, you know, even, even like five years yeah. ago, I'm a completely different person. So there are a lot of things to look forward to. The key is just taking control of those symptoms right now. Focus on that. That's it. Focus on that, on getting yourself yeah. to feel better. And then once you do, then you'll see so many other amazing, ma amazing things are going to happen and come to you. I'm so glad you said that because yes, we're dealing with this, but it is such an empowering period of life that, you know, it's like, yes, this exists, but I, I wouldn't have it any other way because I feel so empowered and aware of who I am as a woman. I was wondering if you could touch a bit more about uh, the phantom smells. That's so interesting. Uh, how did uh, research wise, how did this come to be known? So um, because when I started realizing that my symptoms, that my phantom smell symptoms were a thing for menopause, I, I started going down like a possibility. I started going down my rabbit holes of research and really trying to understand it a little bit better. And because it's not something that's very well known, it's a more, it's a lesser common known symptom. And sure. once I started realizing I'm writing a book right now, it's coming out next year in 2025, spring of 2025 on menopause. And once I started piecing okay. together so many different parts of my life, I'm like, wait a minute, that's a perimenopause symptom. 
that's what I was experiencing at 36. Mm. So I realized like, cause I had a baby at 42 and a uh, 41. And okay. I thought that I went from having my third to going into perimenopause. But now looking back, I realized that I was actually, I got pregnant in perimenopause and then had her when yeah. I was in perimenopause. Cause I had lost the baby. I got pregnant at 40. I lost the baby. And then I got pregnant with my third again. And I'm like, so, and, but I didn't know anything at the time. Nobody had mentioned it to me. Nobody had said it's a possibility. So once I started going down the research, um, you know, the path of the, of research, I was like, okay, so phantom smells, that's really interesting. Let me understand more kind of like what we did with the sleep. Yeah. And I'm like, mm -hmm. what are phantom smells and what are we smelling in this phase of life versus others? So we created a survey for that too. We have over a thousand responses for that. So again, if there are any, you want to help with our survey, please, Marcy, I'd love you to put a link below to the um, surveys because we are keeping them open, like okay. ongoing. So I just want to keep analyzing it as we get more, we get more, more responses. So we found that the yeah. number one symptom, the number one smell. So a phantom smell is when you're smelling something that somebody isn't. It doesn't exist in the environment. So I've had a lot of women will say, well, what if I smell it before anyone else? That's not a phantom smell. That just means you have a great sense of smell. <laughs> so a phantom smell <laughs> means it doesn't really exist. So the number one phantom smell is smoke. And that could mean cigarette smoke, cigar smoke, campfires, any type of smoke. That's what the number one smell. And it's by a lot, by the way, almost 60% of women in perimenopause and menopause, smell that. And by the way, almost over, I think it's over 80% of women have phantom smells, which is a very large number. Then from there, it drops to 25%. The second one is mildew. And then BO is 24%. So you could see that's a huge gap between the smoke smell and then everything else. And then it uh, then we go to electri electronics, uh, overheated electricity is a big one, weed, cat pee, sulfur, oh. sewage, rotten eggs, uh, burned plastic, like flip-flops, like cheap plastic smells, like flip-flops, burned toast, rotten food, metal. That's another big one. Gasoline. Ooh. Yep. Gasoline is a big one. And then we've got like oily hair. A lot of women will say, I smell like dirty hair. You know, I didn't have that one. So I don't know exactly what that <laughs> means, but that's something that a lot of women will describe. Uh, garlic. And then, you know, so, and then there's also some good ones like garlic and chrysanthemums and perfume and like laundry detergent mm. and chicken soup. And I'm like, wow, why couldn't <laughs> I have those? I had any of those like blueberry muffins and chocolate chip cookies. I'm like, I could have done with those, but now I had the gasoline and the burnt toast. But so those are, those are the phantom smells. Wow. That's, and I didn't realize that women can actually smell sweet phantom smells. So again, something really interesting and new to me that I found out from my research. Yeah. That is mind blowing. I mean, my goodness, <laughs> I can't even wrap my mind around that. That's incredible. Thank yeah. you. All right. So what are the top 10 most surprising symptoms in perimenopause? So the, we'll say surprising and lesser known, because I think that's an important thing um, to say, because for me, and like, eh, they're pretty surprising, I guess. So for me, the connection between itchy ears. So a lot of women will say they have itchy ears. So itchy ears is mm. when, because when estrogen levels go down, our skin becomes, so estrogen keeps things plump and moist and hydrated. When estrogen starts to go down, things right. become drier, right? Including the mucous membranes in our ears. So our ears, you might get really itchy ears. So well, the first thing you'll do is go to your doctor and say, my ears are itchy. Let's send you to an ENT. Be like, oh, you might have allergies, right? So you all, again, want to get things checked yeah. out. If your ENT comes back and says, I don't even, you have no allergies. There's nothing, you know, I can't explain it. Good chance that it's perimenopause or menopause symptoms. So an easy fix for that, by the way, Marcy, is omega. We have a product called mm -hmm. Omega-3T. It's our Omega-3 fish oil. And it works like mm -hmm. a charm, like literally, like I take three soft gels a day and my, I don't have any itchy ears or dry eyes. So I would say that's a good, easy very fix, good. a very common symptom, not well known, but a really easy fix for it. So take your omega threes, triglyceride form and take enough. <laughs> so you could always check out ours, which is our omega three T on our Morphous site. The other one would be mm -hmm. loss of appetite, food aversions, body odor. That's a big one where women will say, all of a sudden I stink in one or both armpits. Generally, it's if it's one, it's the left <laughs> one. <laughs> They're like, why is my left armpit wow. smell? So BO is a big one too. Okay. My gosh. <laughs> this is just so incredible. You know, uh, even the phantom smell. So 
I was telling my husband, I'm like, I smell like cigarette smoke in the bathroom. And it's like, oh, okay, well, <laughs> I guess I don't actually. <laughs> you have phantom smells. Again, it's so common, yeah. right? Like, it's so interesting Amazing. how it's such a common symptom. But yet, I can't, Marcy, I can't even tell you how many doctors are like, I don't know what's wrong with you. I don't know what's wrong with you. I'm like, here's why, again, education yeah. is so important. If we just said it's probably perimenopause or menopause if we can't find a cause, right? And then you have frequent urination, right. burning scalp, burning mouth. These are some other ones as well. Social anxiety, health anxiety, like mm. I mentioned, electric shocks. That's a big one. You might get like these electric shocks in your body and then um, mm. cold flashes and vertigo and tinnitus. Those are common, those are common, mm. but yet not well known that are associated with menopause. Wow. Amazing. Well, Andrea, oh my gosh, you have been a wealth of information. Uh, I, Personally, I can't wait for your book to come out because I can't oh, wait to you. read it. <laughs> and I will indeed add the link to uh, our session. And if people are interested in learning more about you, please let them know where they can find you. Sure. Uh, we're on all social media. I'm on TikTok, which is where I kind of tend to hang out at Andrea Donsky. And then we're also on TikTok in a little bit. Um, on We Are Morphous, but we're on Instagram at We Are Morphous, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, <laughs> everywhere else. <laughs> so we're in a lot of other places with the at We Are Morphous. So they can go there and then they can go to my website. So we have a whole line of amazing, high quality research backed supplements that I take myself. So that's the other thing. I only have products that I take or my partner Randy takes, my business partner Randy takes. And um, right. they help, they help with a lot of the symptoms that we talked about. And that's, that's why I wanted to launch it was because I wanted to help women in a way that I was helping myself. I found solutions and I was like, all right, I'm going to help everyone else with their symptoms as well. So they can go to my website, which is mm -hmm. wearemorphous.com. Well, thank you so very much for being on. Thank you so much for the information. Uh, all right, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this episode with Andrea Donsky. All right, everyone. I love you all. Take care. And thank you, Andrea. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>